All right, movie lovers, it's time for the Louisiana Film Channel's Wednesday Night at the Movies. I'm LaTangela Fay, your host. Louisiana Film Channel is a new entertainment service. Louisiana Film Channel will be available on most all devices and showcasing Louisiana films, filmmakers, and our unique lifestyles. If you're a filmmaker, you can submit your titles by clicking Content Partners on our homepage. For Louisiana lovers across the globe, you can download the app starting December 1st and enjoy movies and series that include everything Louisiana, from Gators to Mardi Gras, the music, food, and culture. Now here's my co-host, Taylor Sharp, with a wonderful film about one woman's conviction to pray for everyone, produced by Electric Zoo Films. Taylor, show us Mrs. Carmela Praise. Thanks, LaTangela. I'm joined now by Ms. Danita Jackson, the creative director at Electric Zoo. Ms. Danita, how are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, we're here to discuss your story, Miss Carmela Praise. Um, the, the story of prayer means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Um, was there a certain situation in your personal life that led you to do a story about prayer? Well, I have to say that uh, I'm always been, I've always been fascinated in the Catholic uh, tradition of New Orleans. I'm not a Catholic. I'm not a Christian myself, but I've been fascinated by that. And um, honestly, when I uh, started hearing how Carmela prayed in the mornings and then the evenings, I was very inspired by that. And I thought, no matter what your religion, even if you're an atheist, uh, this kind of prayer or meditation could actually lift your spirit up as well as lifting up the spirit of the world. And so I was just super inspired by that. And um, that's kind of why I decided to make the film. I see that you've studied at a variety of places, including the London Film School, which I just want to say that's very impressive. Um, you. So you have a lot of educational experience when it comes to filmmaking. Tell me a little bit about your professional career. Is this your first film? Or if it's not, what films have you done in the past? Well, I actually started as a writer, and I was uh, writing for magazines, English language magazines in Tokyo, when I decided to go to film school uh, at, in my mid-30s. So I went there to the London Film School. I met my partner, Patrick Jackson, with whom I make all of my films. He's also my husband. And we made a couple of films in London, but then in 2008, we came back to New Orleans. I'm originally from Southeast Louisiana. He's from Sweden. And we started making a slate of films that were set in an area that we call Down the Road. And if you're from New Orleans, Down the Road means Miro or Poydras or Violet. And these are just sort of outlying areas of New Orleans. And most of our films, I would say, well, actually all of our films that we've made since returning in 2008, and we've made about, I would say, nine, eight of them take place down the road. So they're both fiction and documentary. And we also have films that are hybrid, which is a blending of fiction and documentary. Uh, actually, the girl who's washing dishes in Miss Carmela Praise is a fictional character. So in a way, there's some fiction in Carmela Praise as well. Okay, so this movie actually does take place in New Orleans. That's where the entire film was shot? Yes, uh, the film takes place in the greater New Orleans area. So some of it takes place in St. Rock, and some of it takes place in Chalmette, which is where Carmela was living at the time of the film. And Chalmette is about four miles outside of the French Quarter. It's in, technically in St. Bernard Parish, but it's considered part of the Greater New Orleans area, the, G, uh, the GNO, Greater New Orleans. I don't know what the O stands for. <laughs> well, Ms. Danita, I'm certainly excited to check out this film. Let's check it out right now. Great. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Angels are really of something. And I'll, I'll say the prayer for the angels, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll read the front and the back. Angels are with you every step of the way and help your soul with amazing grace. After all, we are all angels in training. All we have to do is spread our wings and fly. <laughs> Jesus, Blessed Mother, thank you. And these two Blessed Mothers, thank you. 
And I said, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, please help us. And the angel, please help us. Here's Jesus carrying his cross. And I got the other Jesus laying down. I, t I name them, I go touch them all. Name the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Please take care of my Auntie Perpetual, my Frankie, me. I said, and uh, my food. Thank you for my food. And the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Because every time I see y'all, I give you a dollar and all that. One's for Daniel, one's for Derek, and one's for um, Nicholas. Right. It's not much, but it's a little something. I'm in my room. I'll say my prayers by all my saints that I have. I pray for Daniel, Derek, Danielle, Michelle, Gerard, Nicholas. Then I pray for. <clears throat> all my family, my immediate family, my family, my relatives, my friends, my neighbors, and then if they have no one to pray from, I pray for those health, wealth, happiness, and peace, perpetually channeling them worldwide, that way everybody gets included. Because if I meet one of my friends, I say, well, I did pray for you this morning too now, because I don't want to leave anyone out, you know. Since I'm older, I realize that uh, my, since my son passed away, I'll, I'll say perpetually channeling on Anthony. <laughs> Thank you, Destiny. My mother told me it was the queen who needed her neighbor when she had the baby. <laughs> the king, nowhere around when she had the baby. So the neighbor delivered the baby. So we need our neighbors. My mother told me, love your neighbor as yourself for the love of they. I was born on Claiborne and uh, St. Anthony, my midwife. We had two rooms, two rooms in the kitchen, no bath, no toilet. We had to go outside, you know. Three brothers slept in this bed and the three sisters over here. I was six and my sister slept with my mom and my daddy. That was seven of us. I'm happy to work in New York because that's all I knew all my life. See people go on cruises, that wouldn't make me happy. I'm out there this morning <laughs> pulling my weeds. I'm just as happy as I could be out there. Ain't that funny? I like this. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And, and then I don't want to neglect this when I say Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. These two pages, like this, that I pray for everyone, all your names on here. I name all of them in the morning. It takes me 45 minutes to an hour by the time I finish my prayers, you know? Now here's my brother, little brother, right here. Vincent Sofio, my grandfather and my grandmother. 1855, five for 14 is nine, and five for 12, she was 79. Then we had the year was born, but he was 63. She was 73, rest in peace. And he was 57, 57 years old. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed are fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It's my mother and my father, and um, my brother, my sister, and my sister-in-law. You miss them, Mom? You miss them? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have no family no more like I had. Her gift can get lost in the layers. She needs to remember that her work begins with herself. To be attentive to others, she must listen to her own heart. 
to care for others. She must take time for herself to teach self-love to others. She must act loving toward her own body and her time. As I do, a mother spirit. And I'm being a crybaby today. But that's how I say my prayers. Join the conversation now, live on Twitter. Meet the cast and get details on Louisiana Film Channel swag. Twitter alert now at hashtag LA Film Channel. Welcome back, movie lovers. I'm LaTangela Faye, and this is Wednesday Night at the Movies, presented by the Louisiana Film Channel. What a great show we've had so far. And now, settle in with your favorite movie snack, and let's pick up where we left off before the break. Joined once again by Ms. Danita Jackson from the Electric Zoo. Ms. Danita, I enjoyed this film. I noticed there was a ton of close-up shots of Ms. Carmella. As a film junkie, I love films. I usually enjoy a wide variety of shots. However, in this film, I think the close-up shots really got you in touch with who Miss Carmella is as a person. Is that what you were trying to do with all those shots? Absolutely. We really wanted to be in close so that there was sort of a, a feel of intimacy uh, between the viewer and the subject. But also, I'm sure you noticed, uh, Taylor, that the, the face of the Carmela's face is just uh, carved with uh, experience. So she has some very deep lines in her face, and her face is very expressive. And uh, we decided, my husband and I decided to kind of do this in mostly close up so that we could um, engage the audience uh, so that they could feel this intimate connection with Carmela and also see everything that she had been through in her 88 years. Yeah. Probably my favorite scene in the entire film is the cemetery scene. You can see that New Orleans style theme to it, the mausoleums in the background. And the close up on her face, you can hear her talking about her family. You can almost hear a cry in her voice. I thought that was very effective. Were you trying to evoke a lot of emotion out of Miss Carmela or did it just come naturally? Well, I mean, Carmela is a very, was a very emotional person. Uh, she didn't have a problem with just crying when she felt like crying, and I think that's just fantastic. But going back to the cemetery, the St. Rock Cemetery, it's one of the oldest cemeteries in New Orleans. It's still there. And um, what, what really struck us is that her, almost her entire family was in that cemetery. And one of the family members that was in there was a younger brother who had died in childhood. And you could, you could tell that that was just still right there uh, in her experience. Uh, she still held all of those people in her heart. And another thing that really <clears throat> struck me about that scene is that she's so comfortable in the cemetery. She was so comfortable with death. She knew that she had lived a good life. Uh, she was a Christian. She believed that Jesus was going to come down and take her up to heaven. And I believe that he did because she left, she led such a beautiful life, such a wonderful life. And in the end, she was just not afraid to die. Um, she knew that she lived a great life and uh, she was ready uh, for Jesus. Well, Ms. Danita, I enjoyed the film. I thought it was very effective and well done. What's next for you? Do you have any projects on the horizon that we can expect from you? Uh, yeah, we have a project that we're working on right now called Homeland Wetland, which is an environmental and experimental uh, environmental documentary. And uh, it's about sort of the extraction and exploitation of our Louisiana homeland over the past 100 years told from the future's point of view, from the future's point of view. So if there's sort of a speculative ending to it, this is something that I was talking about earlier, how we like to blur the lines between fiction and uh, documentary uh, in order to tell a greater uh, truth in the story. Okay, now, fans of your films and this story in particular where can they go to view more of the movies that you have made 
Well, they can go to our website, which is electriczoo.com. That's spelled with K's, www.electrizoo.com. And you can also just Google my name, D-A-N-E-T-A -E Jackson. And a lot of our Instagram uh, stories will show up and our Facebook pages will show up uh, as, well as, our, uh, as well as any kind of uh, press that we've done. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how you get to us. And I'm real happy to engage with audience members. I'm very uh, available and um, people can find my contact details. So if anyone's interested in knowing more or interested in just talking about film in general, they can email me or they can get in touch over Facebook. Well, Ms. Danita, I enjoyed the film. I can't wait to check out some more of your stuff. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks so much, Taylor. I appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying our Wednesday night at the movies. I'm Latangela Faye, and each week here on the Louisiana Film Channel, we have a special called Hollywood on the Bayou, produced by our friend and mentor, Ed Poole. I can't wait to see what exciting part of Louisiana film history he has for us this week. Take it away, Ed. Thanks, LaTangela, for this edition of Louisiana Film History Flashback. Wait a minute, why are we in black and white instead of color? Did our budget get cut? No, because in this edition we present a Louisiana film that is considered film noir. Mm, what's that? You know, a film that's moody, dark, dramatic. It normally involves a crime and has ominous music. Ooh, and it stars Edward G. Robinson. He was credited with almost a hundred films. Yeah, my favorite is when he plays a gangster with Bugs Bunny. That wasn't one of his films. In this episode, we get to see him as a New Orleans homicide detective. Mm, so let's flash back to 1956 for the film noir nightmare. The term film noir refers to a style of film marked by a mood of pessimism, fatalism, and menace. The term was coined in the 1940s by a group of French critics to describe American black and white thriller and detective films. Film noir literally means dark cinema, and it was popular style of filmmaking during the 1940s and 1950s. The 1956 Louisiana shot film Nightmare was one such film. Nightmare starred film icon Edward G. Robinson in one of his later roles. Robinson is remembered for his classic portrayals of gangsters, even inspiring a Looney Tunes cartoon character. The versatile actor appeared in over 90 movies and received an Academy Award for Lifetime Achievement in Films in 1973. He was the sixth subject honored in the Legends of Hollywood series postal stamps as issued by the U.S. Postal Service. In this film, Robinson plays a New Orleans homicide detective trying to answer a fascinating question. Can a person commit a murder while under a hypnotic spell and be unaware of it? A jazz musician, played by famed character actor Kevin McCarthy, dreams that he killed a man. The dream is so vivid that he's certain it actually took place. He seeks advice from his brother-in-law, played by Robinson, who doubts he actually committed a crime. But when a murdered man is discovered under the circumstances described in the dream, the detective is confronted with the strangest case of his career. Nightmare was the first film by the restructured Pine Thomas Shane Production Company. Pine Thomas was formed in 1940 by William Pine and William Thomas as a production unit for Paramount Pictures. When Thomas Pine died in 1955, Maxwell Shane became a partner. Shane wrote the screenplay and directed Nightmare. It was a remake of Shane's earlier 1947 film titled Fear in the Night. 
Both films were based on a short story first published in Argosy Magazine in 1941 as And So to Death, written by Cornel Woolrich under the pseudonym of William Irish. Except for changing the story's locale to New Orleans and the occupation from a bank clerk to a jazz musician, the plots of both movies are virtually identical. A larger production budget for Nightmare allowed for location shooting in and around New Orleans, giving a fantastic look at downtown New Orleans and the French Quarter at that time. Blues singer Connie Russell and jazz musician Billy May appeared in their first dramatic film roles. May also arranged the modern score for the film. At the time, producer Bill Thomas hadn't heard of Billy May, but his teenage daughter Carol was a fan and she convinced her father to give him the job. The remaining cast included Virginia Christine, Gage Clark, Reese Williams, Barry Atwater, and Marion Carr. In late October of 1955, the film crew arrived in New Orleans for location shooting. Scenes included several sites on Canal Street, a local hotel, the morning call coffee stand on Decatur, and a mansion in Lafouche Parish. The film also features a montage of neon signs of French Quarter hotspots during the 1950s. <laughs> The film premiered in New York on May the 11th, 1956, and in New Orleans at the Sanger on May 26th. It had a general release in June of 1956 and an international release. This has been a presentation of Hollywood on the Bayou, preserving Louisiana's rich film history with books, prints, presentations, and exhibits. If you have questions, comments, or to learn more, you can visit our Facebook page or sign up for our Louisiana and Film newsletter, which is on our website, hollywoodonthebayou.com. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Louisiana Film History Flashback. Sue and I thank you, and we'll see you next time. Hey, movie lovers, stay tuned. Wednesday night at the movies, we'll be right back. Popcorn time. Hi, and welcome back. I'm Latangela Fay, and this is the Louisiana Film Channel's Wednesday Night at the Movies. The Louisiana Film Channel is a new entertainment service. Louisiana Film Channel will be available on all devices and showcasing Louisiana films, filmmakers, and our unique lifestyles. If you're a filmmaker, you can submit your titles by clicking Content Partner on our homepage. For Louisiana lovers across the globe, you can download the app starting December 1st and experience every Everything Louisiana, from Gators to Mardi Gras, the music, food, and culture. Now here's my co-host, Taylor Sharp, with an emotionally charged film titled Alyssa's Diary, from Devontae Blackwell. All right, LaTangela, we are joined now by filmmaker Devontae Blackwell to talk about his short film, Alyssa's Diary. Devontae, welcome to the Louisiana Film Channel. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Look. I love the filmmaking industry. Um, was Alyssa's Diary your first film, or did you have some previous uh, films and projects that you had worked on? I worked on a few short films, um, you know, just over the years growing up. Um, but Alyssa's Diary was my first short film that I did with my production company, Captivating Cinema. Okay, and where was this? Um, where was this film shot at? Where did did it all take place in one area, or did you have to move around a little bit? So Alyssa's Diary was um, shot in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Okay, and what, 
This, the title of Alyssa's Diary could mean a lot of different things. Without giving away any spoilers, though, what could you, what could you tell us? What, what type of film can viewers expect? Um, Alyssa's Diary uh, was actually created as an inspirational, uh, motivational video for one of my cousins. Um, there was a time where my brother and I uh, moved in with my aunt and uncle, and um, you know they took us in and everything like that. And then I graduated high school, and then I moved out. And maybe a few months after I moved out, my aunt actually uh, passed away unexpectedly. And um, she had uh, one daughter. She had a few kids, but she had one daughter in particular uh, that I actually uh, kind of based the story off of. But um, it's an inspirational video for those who have lost uh, loved ones and specifically parents. Well, you know, I'm sorry to hear that, but I, I like how you, you inspired this film off of something that you experienced personally. Uh, I'm a, I always enjoy uplifting films, and I can't wait to check it out. Let's bring it to you right now. This is Alyssa's Diary. Well, what does it say? Blessed are they that mourn. Mourn. For they shall be comforted. So it says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. What does it mean to mourn? I'm not sure. To cry, to be sorry, to have a heavy heart, to be sad. And so he's saying, if you mourn, he's going to comfort you. Okay? He's not saying you're not going to mourn. But he's saying he's going to put his arm around you and make it all better. Okay? All right. Let's say prayers, because it is time for bed. You leave. Not a day goes by that I haven't thought about you. The way you're fun and full of excitement. The way we laughed together. The way you smiled. And the way you loved me. Dear Joey, how are you? Question mark. Capital asks me. We learned something very. We learned something really interesting today in school. Period. It was about baseball. Every night before I went to bed, you would read me a scripture. There's one you read that serves as a constant reminder till this day. It's Matthew 5, 4, which reads, "Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted." Also, remember how you would encourage me to pray. Okay. Okay. Step by step. God, we thank you for our day today. We thank you for the lessons we learned. We ask that you give us peaceful sleep and that you send us good angels in our dreams. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good night, honey. Good night. And don't turn that TV on. I'm taking the remote. I know everything works together for good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. So instead of continuing to grieve and mourn, I live with patience and hopes to see you again and rejoice. Today, I decided to let go of the past and allow God to work on me. So I'm leaving you with my diary of grievous emotions as I walk in newness.
Okay, welcome back. We are here once again with Devante Blackwell. Devante, just watch the film. I enjoyed it. I mean, it was it was short and simple, not a not a very long runtime. Although it was short, I still feel like I learned a lot about the character from the beginning when she talks about the passing of her mother and and how her mother really taught her how to pray and become religious to the end where she decides that she's going to stop dwelling in the past. She's going to move forward and really let God take control of her life. Um, I love the journey that you put on her. What, what made you want to go in that direction? Thank you. Um, first of all, I, I appreciate that. I, I really do. Um, it just, to me, I thought it was good to show uh, what she was going through, you know, the heartache, the grieving and everything like that. But I thought that a good twist would be, you know, the person that taught you something, uh, that something is the same thing that keeps you going when that person is no longer there. Um, you know, and in this particular uh, case, it was faith. You know, her mother instilled in her faith and belief, you know, in prayer. And because of that, those very things were the things that were able to carry her on after her, mo her mother's passing. Yeah, um... Look, what I loved most about this, it was shot beautifully. Um, the flashback scenes of her as a child, and she, you know, she's running and playing in slow motion. I thought that was the best part of the scene. Um, that cemetery, huge cemetery, where, where was that located? Um, that was in Lake Charles uh, as well. Um, most of the filming we did was actually in one uh, particular area of Lake Charles. Um, but it was off of a, a street called Martin Luther King um, Highway. Actually, okay, well, and that was probably the best scene of the whole film, in my opinion. I loved how it, it shot across the big cemetery, then it zoomed in on her mother's grave. I thought it was well done. Um, Devante, this really was an uplifting film. Um, what, what can we expect from you in the future? Do you, do you always tend to focus on uplifting films, or do you, do you like to do a variety? So, yeah, I would love to, as far as genre-wise, I love to do a variety of films, um, whether it be, uh, you know, whether it be something more in the horror genre or whether it be a drama or whether it be a comedy. But um, everything that you can expect from me will be thought-provoking. You know, it will be uh, in some forms life-changing, uh, no matter what genre we, we tend to go uh, with. Um, I have some more short films that are coming, and I also uh, wrote a feature script uh, it's about a young father who is uh, struggling to overcome the bondage of poverty and provide a better life for his family. So, um, but everything that we do, you can definitely expect for it to be um, thought provoking and in some way, shape, or form life changing. Well, Devante, I love what you're doing. I love how you're trying to inspire people. Can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right, man. Join the conversation now, live on Twitter. Meet the cast and get details on Louisiana Film Channel swag. Twitter alert now at hashtag LA Film Channel. Hi, I'm LaTangela Fay, and this is the Louisiana Film Channel's Wednesday Night at the Movies. The Louisiana Film Channel is a new entertainment service that will be available on all devices and showcasing Louisiana films, filmmakers, and our unique lifestyles. If you're a filmmaker, you can submit your titles by clicking Content Partner on our homepage. For Louisiana lovers across the globe, you can download the app starting December 1st and experience everything Louisiana. From from Gators to Mardi Gras, the music, food, and culture. Now here's my co-host, Taylor Sharp, with a film entitled A Better Birthday from David James Hamilton. All right, thanks, Latangela. We are joined right now by Jared LaRue, director of A Better Birthday. Jared, how are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for joining me. Um, your, your film, A Better Birthday, without giving too much away 
What can we expect? I mean, obviously, I'm I'm thinking of a birthday style theme. Is it a happy birthday? Is it a sad birthday? What can we expect while watching your film? The fever dream birthday. Okay. How I describe it? Okay, so a little 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 strangeness to it. I like it. Um, is this your first film? No. Uh... This film is made with a film collective called Windbreaker, and we make a bunch of different purposely insane and kind of low production value short films. Um, personally, I've made a bunch of films myself, uh, but this, yeah, this was the first Windbreaker film that we ever made. Okay, so first Windbreaker film. Uh, what part of Louisiana did you shoot this particular movie in? Uh, New Orleans. New Orleans, okay, and it was all shot in New Orleans? Okay, so we can expect a little bit, a uh, little bit of weirdness. You mentioned Fever Dream. Uh, what, what genre would you classify this movie in? Uh, family film. Family film. Okay, so so a lighthearted film. All right, well, Jared, look, let's just jump right into it. Here is a better birthday right now. Sounds good. <laughs> Good morning, Dad. It's a beautiful day. So beautiful. <gasps> it's Uncle Nicky's birthday. <gasps> it's Uncle Nicky's birthday. Good morning, Uncle Nicky. We have a surprise for you. It's my birthday! Yes, let's. Wait, we have to have breakfast first. <laughs> Uncle Nicky, what do you want to do for your birthday? Way to law school. I passed the bar. Uncle Nicky, 
I need to speak with you immediately. Come in, come in. Special Agent Larry Chetta, your country needs you, sir. Mom, Dad. I think it's time for a little birthday break. Watch a movie, or maybe we, we could just wait. Um, so we start it. You know? Yeah. He knows it. He knows we still have stuff planned, right? I think. Okay. I mean, yeah, it was a long list. It's been a, it's been a while. Since it's been a long, a long time. Yeah. Birthday boy's back. <laughs> Plans, but that sounds way better. Hey, movie lovers, stay tuned. Wednesday night at the movies, we'll be right back. Popcorn time. Welcome back, movie lovers. I'm LaTangela Faye, and this is Wednesday Night at the Movies, presented by the Louisiana Film Channel. What a great show we've had so far. And now, settle in with your favorite movie snack, and let's pick up where we left off before the break. We are back with Jared LaRue. Jared, just watched the film. You were not kidding when you said Fever Dream. Uh, the shock value alone from the first scene it, it blew my mind and I found myself laughing and at the same time like what is going on like I could not figure it out um I loved how they were kind of a child's role the whole time brushing their teeth with the whipped uh, icing I feel like if you got kids to brush with the whipped icing it'd be a lot easier to get them to brush their teeth you know um but yeah light-hearted film I enjoyed it and I liked how you kept us entertained and, and interested until the very end because I'll be honest, this film made absolutely no sense to me. And then at the very end, I was like, okay, now I get it. Now it's coming together. Um, why did you decide to make the film like that? Because I thought it was effective and I love the way you, you framed the ending. Thank you. Um, so it was actually part of the 48 hour film festival in New Orleans and we pulled family film. And we were just like, I don't know what that means, right? Like, I don't know what a family film actually is. And so we just sat around, you know, for a whole night writing and coming up with ideas. And so 
we just came up with the concept of what if we made like this kind of like farce of a family film, but never like wink at the camera. Like do a bunch of things that kind of wink at the camera, but just like really, um, really like uh, act as if like these adults who are obviously adults were children. Um, and like, what would happen if like there was a kid who wanted to like do all these crazy things for a birthday, but we just had adults play the roles. And so that was really the concept that we just kept trying to heighten it, essentially. So the, the actors and the main writers are a bunch of improvisers, and they'll always talk about how we need to heighten, we need to push to the next level. And so it's just like, what are crazier, crazier, crazier things that make no sense, that are really weird, that are really uncomfortable, that look really bad too, right? Like it's intentionally very, like very poor. Yeah, look, I'll be honest, you got me with the film because I've never seen a film like this before. The whole time I'm watching it, I'm trying to figure out, I'm like, okay, did he get adults to play kids? Are they pretending to be kids? And then at the end, when the little girl was like, no, that's what Uncle Nicky wants to do for his birthday. And then, then the whole title made sense to me because he said, well, I wanted to do this, but that sounds like a much better birthday. I... I thought it was very well done. Uh, what is what is next for you as a filmmaker? I'm actually working on a production right now that we're about to shoot on uh, in like Hammond, Louisiana. Um, with Windbreaker, we're always trying to get together and, and make something that costs little to no money. I kind of like we're not really too into a lot of production value. We're just really into like kind of rapidly making something and having fun while doing it. Uh, personally, I'm working on a bunch of different documentaries and a couple of different narrative short films, all in Louisiana. And uh, I'll definitely be checking out that next one because you mentioned Hammond, Louisiana. As a Southeastern graduate, I will definitely check that one out. Um, Jared, I enjoyed the film. Can't wait to see what you do in the future. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hope you're joining our conversation live on Twitter right now. We want you to comment on all of this. Now, each week here on the Louisiana Film Channel, we have a special, here it is, on location. We're on location in Louisiana, right here in my hometown of Howard at the Panavision facility. Panavision is the entertainment industry's leading designer, manufacturer, and rental provider of high-quality optics and camera systems. With over seven decades in the industry, Panavision is your one-stop shop for all things cinematography. Let's go take a look. Uh, I'm Steve Krull, and I'm with Panavision and I'm the marketing executive for the Louisiana area. Basically, we are a camera rental house and we manufacture cameras, lenses, but we also are working on the post side as well now with the acquisition of light iron. So now we do dailies, color and post as well, all the way to deliverables. Well, this is, um, this is our second facility. Uh, originally, we had a building two doors down um, that we opened two weeks before Katrina hit the industry ended up moving up to Shreveport. So we were servicing shows from there. Um, it got really busy uh, when things started coming back to New Orleans. Um, and in 2015, we kind of figured we need to get to a bigger space. We have uh, a full on camera service department. So lens service, camera service, uh, machine shop, so you're going to get the, the same treatment, the same service here that you're going to get in, you know, New York, London, Los Angeles, you know, anywhere there's a Panavision office, you're going to, you know, get the same treatment. What we're really proud of is our ability to adapt and customize things for our customers. I think most other places can't offer that. and. You know, we can take care of them and cater to them from, you know, when they're picking up their cameras and lenses all the way down to when they're picking how their final movie is going to look at the end. So first show, Jack Reacher, um, and then other big shows that we've done, uh, 12 Years a Slave, Mudbound, uh, Queen and Slim uh, for TV series, Treme, uh, Queen of the South. On becoming a god in Central Florida, Claws, 
Uh, Greyhound is another big show we've done with Tom Hanks uh, and many, many more. Coming from the outside, I was in Los Angeles for 16 years and working at Woodland Hills, the office there. And coming here, one thing I noticed uh, is in talking to other cinematographers or crew members from outside of LA, uh, outside of Louisiana, say how great the crews are here. I mean, they're on top of it. They're really amazing to work with. Um, also, just the small independent film, film community that's here is a very tight-knit community, and that's something I didn't see um, in other places where people really help each other out here, um, and it's kind of a cool thing to see. Um, you don't usually see that everywhere. Wow, what an amazing resource right here in Harahan, Louisiana. Everything you need from production to post in one place. Let's go see what's happening around the rest of the state in film. Things are picking up fast. There's currently one feature film and two TV shows in production right now. There's also five TV shows, a few of which you've probably heard of, and two feature films currently in prep and hoping to shoot in the next month or so. That's seriously exciting. We'll have another report for you next week on location in Louisiana. Well, that's a wrap for this week's show. Watch for our app coming December 1st to all platforms, including Apple TV, Android, Chromecast, and more. And thank you for joining in on the Twitter alerts. I'm Latangela Fay for the Louisiana Film Channel. And thanks for joining me for this week's field trip. I'll see you on the red carpet. <laughs>